Hi folks, it's Dave at the High Nibble. Um, back with my second video for the Retro Fair weekend. I would much rather have been uh, showing you this live at the VCF Pacific Northwest, uh, but I've kind of recreated what I would have had on display at my booth here on my dining room table. Unfortunately, I don't have the luxury of a workshop, so I tend to requisition some public spaces around the house when I need to do R&D work. So let's get down to what I want to show you in this video. Uh, the star of the show being this little board here. This, I, I warn you now, this is absolutely sort of first prototype um, hardware and alpha software. Absolutely anything could fail at any time. But this is my uh, S132 add-on board. Uh, that's uh, S100 married with ESP32. And yes, I know there's an ESP32 on board in the IMSA 8080 a replica, but in fact, this board has a second ESP32 along with some bodge wires and caps there. And um, the reason for this is that I'm using the FabGL library, uh, an, a, an amazing bit of software that lets you output VGA from an ESP32, connect up a PS2 keyboard. You can see the second PS2 connector there is for a mouse just because the library supports it, but I won't be including that in the uh, final version of this add-on. I just wanted to play around with it in this early development stage. Uh, there's a 16-way ribbon cable at the top there. At the moment, I've got that on, an, on a cable and plugged into that 16-pin uh, connector just under the ESP32 on the back of the INSE. Later on, uh, my intention is that this board would actually plug directly here at the back of the IMSE and you just connect the VGA and PS2 keyboards at the bottom there. But while I'm in development mode and working on it, the ribbon cable's handy and I guess that would be an option for people as well. So you'll notice that all I've got here is a, a low cost LCD monitor, a PS2 keyboard, uh, the monitor for anyone who's interested in such a device is this one here. No idea how to even say that. Um, I think it was about less than $100 on eBay. And the idea is that this board provides the three main visual displays that you're, you'd be interested in hooking up to your MSA 8080. So a VT100 terminal emulation uh, trying to be as accurate as possible with that. I'll go into that a little later. Uh, it provides the IMSE VIO, um, bitmap character generator video, but also the Dazzler um, graphics video adapter. All in one card, all over the same VGA connection. So I guess we need to have a look at how that works. That ribbon cable is carrying uh, standard the standard serial lines that you would normally uh, hook a terminal up to the back of the IMSA. But it also uh, includes a third serial connection that runs at three megabits per second. And that's what transmits all the data for the Dazzler and the VIO. So right now, the um, IMSA is booted with a VIO ROM. So we have it in a VIO, the screen display mode, just to prove that. Let's uh, do something. And this is running at 640 by 480 um, pixels. So this particular LCD is 800 by 600. So the output's a little blurry when I've got it as full screen like that. I've included the ability on the keyboard to cycle through the same sort of color combinations, green, closest I can get to amber with the uh, DAC that I'm using. And you can also drop it into a kind of faux interlace mode, but it's a bit dim at that point because we're outputting half as many scan lines. So I will kind of put it back probably in white or green for the sake of the video. So that's the uh, VIO. Well, you know, just to prove that we're definitely running VIO here, we can do things like uh, the V mode commands, switch to 40 columns. Uh, 
it's pretty lousy. Let's put it back into 80 column mode. Um, you'll notice everything's uppercase, so we can use V mode to drop it into uh, mixed case mode. So that's an absolutely standard um, implementation of the VIO. The second peripheral and uh, is the Dazzler graphics display. So I'll head over to the Dazzler disc. Um, we'll run the, the typical K-scope, kaleidoscope. And to switch uh, displays, for anyone who's familiar with uh, virtual terminals on a Linux machine, I've just set it up that you use Alt F1, F2, and F3 to get to the three displays. So to switch to the Dazzler is Alt F3. And there you go, you've got the Dazzler um, running off the same uh, board. We can head back over to the VIO and because this is uh, actually written for uh, Chromemco's version of the operating system, I can't do a keyboard press, I have to reset. And we can also then do the usual thing of handing control over to the a serial terminal. So we'll do a, a stat uh, for the console and point it at the TTY device. And that gives me the opportunity to do an Alt F1 and switch over to the VT100 terminal emulation. And yeah, lo and behold, that's frozen up and I'm not getting a response. Let me just see if a reset's gonna help that, but I seriously doubt it. No, but I can show you that it's definitely a VT100 um, because I have taken the VT100 uh, terminal emulator that comes with the FabGL library code and extended it to build in a lot more of the authentic features of a VT100. So we have the setup screens, A for setting tab stops and B for setting comms parameters. Um, but I've added a third page, setup C, which tells you a little bit about um, what you're looking at. So this is the S132 edition of my VT132 terminal. Um, built with Fabrizio's FabGL library. You can see it's running at 800 by 300 and then it's line scan doubling to get the 800 by 600 output. Um, and on this uh, screen, setup screen, which isn't obviously standard to a VT100, you can tell that this VT100 supports uh, color. So it, it will uh, display ANSI color text. Um, you can change the default color by navigating and across the color bar here and hitting the right key combination. One thing I've added, which you wouldn't normally get out of a VT100 setup screen, is inbuilt help to remind you of the features. So you can see there we can actually switch between deck character sets or standard VGA font. We can go 24, 25 line. We can toggle whether we're online or local. And you can also toggle between a standard ANSI or a standard VGA palette. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So this is the standard ANSI palette. The VGA palette isn't uh, responding quite as I would have expected because I've hit the wrong button. It's meant to be a six, isn't it? Um, a six. So that's the VGA palette. And that's the standard ANSI palette. Very subtle differences in a couple of colors. Um, let's have a look at the character set difference. This is the DEC VT100 with special graphics. This is a standard VGA character set. So if you're going to be connecting up to a bulletin board that's, um, sort of v, that's PC ANSI uh, standard, you can switch to this character ROM. That's probably as much as I'm going to be able to show you today. Uh, it does support smooth scrolling. It does support X on, X off. Um, it does... Uh, this character set that you're looking at for the deck uh, character set is actually a full uh, 10 by uh, 10 character cell with bit stretching, uh, pixel stretching ta uh, taking place that you'd get on a real VT100, which is why I chose this small LCD screen because I wanted something that was approximately the size of a real VT100. Um, am I going to get control back if I alt F2 back into the VIO 
and reset. No, I'm not going to get the console back. Let's do a cold reset. There we go. Yep. So we've got the console back and then we're back into CPM. As I said, it's very alpha. It's this demo is kind of held together by a string and uh, gum at the moment, but yeah, it's enough to see where this is heading. Let me see if I can take you on a quick tour of some of the other things that come from this. Probably the first thing that will actually come from all of this work is actually a change to the desktop UI. Uh, nothing to do with this piece of hardware. Um, in the process of building this, I have actually also included, um, you might have noticed two little connectors on the side of that board. And we can plug these two joy pads into these connectors that they currently feed through an ADC on the ESP32, which is absolutely lousy. Um, very noisy and I can't seem to get uh, any decent filtering or averaging taking place. So they're pretty, pretty lousy right now. Um, so I'm going to look at trying a dedicated ADC on the board uh, over I squared C and see if I can improve these. Um, that means that I have I had to implement the Kremenko um, D A7 or A7D, whatever it's called. And so that's something I'm going to be out of put into the standard image for the IMSA 8080 and allow you uh, using the uh, game controller API for web browsers for Chrome. You'll be able to plug in a standard USB game controller and um, play the uh, Dazzler games that were published by Kremenko that expect an analog joystick and for, uh, a four button joystick to be connected. So, so that'll be a hardware feature of this board, but it'll also be a software feature in the, the desktop web UI. Um, what else comes from this? Well, let's have a look at the next generation of the board. Um, here it is. You can see that I've actually moved the ESP32 kind of to the front. It's actually a really interesting way of mounting it. There's a cutout and the pads are reversed. So it actually kind of solders and sits in a little well there. I've removed the mouse connector. Um, I've created a little, uh, that creates a bit of space where I'm gonna also have a go at trying to put some um, circuitry that will support audio out of the emulated Kremenko um, A7D. See if we can get that working as well. You will notice there is one surface mount component on this board, I've tried really hard to stick with through hole, but there is one surface mount component because I'm using a multiplexer to switch between color and monochrome modes for the Dazzler. And that part is not available. I don't think it was ever produced um, in PDIP. It's only available in SOIC um, format. So sorry, there is one surface mount component. Uh, the other thing that stems from this, uh, I have done a little teaser of this before on Twitter, um, but this is an add-on board for the uh, RC2014 and pretty much using the same circuitry and using the FabGL library. Uh, this adds the full VT100 or as I'm calling it, the VT132. So let me just turn that around, uh, look at the back there. So this will be a product known as the VT132, uh, a VT terminal emulator for the RC2014. I know there's a few of those around already, uh, this one does have a few features that differentiate it. I think it's the only one that's running as high res as 800 by 600. Uh, the only one with pixel accurate uh, fonts from the deck ROMs, including pixel stretching. Um, the other feature that I'm going to build into this card is to take the AT wireless modem that I've got in the IMSA 8080 already. And uh, I have that running on this card given that the ESP32 can also provide the Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, there's also the bell, uh, that's on the S132 as well. So you do get Control G bells, and if you really want to turn it on, although it's highly annoying, you can have margin bell as well. Um, so, you know, it is a, it, I am attempting and will continue to always uh, 
improve the accuracy of the VT100 emulation to make it as accurate as possible on both this and the S132 product. So it will take me a little while to get these ready um, ready, for, uh, ready for, the, for you. Um, I've got holidays coming up in April, more holidays in July. Hopefully between those two blocks of holidays, I am going to be able to uh, get this finished and get it, get, get it available for you. Uh, I think there's one last feature that I'll show you here um, because if you're not running the web UI, you'd have to be asking, Dave, how am I going to change disks? How am I going to manage um, my IMSA 8080 when I don't have the web UI running? So there is actually a fourth screen. Let me show you this alt, this, uh, alt function key combination. There's a fourth screen hiding behind alt F4. Sorry, this monitor's got a very slow sync rate. It takes a while for it to sync up. The Fab GL library has uh, got a full GUI um, available through the library. And you can see here that I have included, and this is all keyboard based. That's why I started off with the mouse but realized I didn't need it. Uh, this lets you effectively you know, eject a disk and it will let you navigate to your, whoop, too far, navigate to the library and see a list, list of available images and mount one. It will uh, let you browse the system uh, parameters like you do in the sys window. At the moment, I think that's also just showing the disk list because I haven't finished work in this area of the code. You're going to be able to edit the boot conf file, trigger a reboot, and then that final little piece there, which is while I was I'm testing out these idea of these analog joysticks. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to play ball because I plugged them in after uh, the device was turned powered on. So no, no response. No, no, no response. But you can see just how noisy the analog to digital converter is and it just never settles down. All right, that is probably enough for now. Um, it's something I'm really looking forward to getting working, something I'm really looking forward to making available to you, both this, the S132 product uh, for the IMSA, and also the VT132 product for RC 2014 owners. Okay, guys, I have really enjoyed uh, the retro fair this weekend, watching other people's videos. I hope you've enjoyed watching uh, mine as much as other people's and I look forward to one day getting over to the States uh, to participate in one of the vintage computer festivals there. Okay, thanks again to John for organizing this and to Mike for his passion around the vintage computer festival. Cheers, bye now.